is no one else than my colleague and a man I admire so much, Dr. Darren Wiseman. He's a holistic Thank doctor. You. He's an author. He does so many things. I, I can talk about him for, for hours, but most likely I want to talk about his course today. And as you know very well, in the world today, you know, we experience uh, so much uh, distress and depression. And um, we live in a world of autoimmune disorder. We live in a world of a pandemic. We, we live in the world of Prozac. So Dr. Darren has been trying to help all of us through all his work to heal the mind and heal the subconscious mind because everything comes from the mind. The mind is the one that rules everything and controls the body. And me personally, I support his work. I admire his work. I'm his biggest fan. And I want all of you to subscribe to his course because this course is July 1st and the course is uh, called Mind Medicine to Transform Toxic Emotion and Deepen Your Heart Connection. To be part of this course uh, on July 1st, you have to go to my site, carmenhara.com and let's have Dr. Darren explain us everything, how you guys can heal and how you can live a better life. So go to my site, carmenhara.com, subscribe to my newsletters and you will receive the link to the course. And I told you, majority of you who are part of this course, I give you a gift. I told you because I want, I want you to be part of this course and I told you about this bracelet that you will receive as a gift. So uh, yes, you have to be part of it because uh, because you want to live a better life. You want to be healed from all the pain that you are, you are storing in your subconscious mind, all the trauma you've been going through. But Dr. Darren, welcome and I'm so grateful that you are with me. So tell us much more <laughs> about the course. <laughs> uh, first, I just want to acknowledge that you are an earth angel. You are such a beautiful, beautiful woman with such an incredible, beautiful heart. And you just give and care so much. And I'm just so honored, oh. you know, to have this time together, to have you as a friend and, and to share this journey to empower people. Because, you know, Carmen, you know, the, the world is stressful and there are so many things going on. But if we just back up and we just take a deep breath and let's let's all take a deep breath. It's a great day to be alive. Let's just take a deep breath. And as we exhale, let's remember, let's remember who we are, that our bodies are miracles, that we are intelligently designed to heal and regenerate. We are already whole. Our bodies know how to recognize infection, know how to recognize when um, something is our own cell and when something is not our own cell and how to you know go ahead and repair damage or replace damaged cells you don't need to tell your body to do this our body is designed this way innately to be whole and even more we in our hearts are light our love so true. we in our hearts are are born with with joy and purity and truth and flow and acceptance that there is not a color of a skin or religion or you know or some nationality that is better or worse that we're born with no we are all interconnected and we are all one and and the challenge or maybe my optimistic mind would call it the adventure here on planet earth is this thing called perception and we perceive in our life not truth we perceive what we believe because if we perceive truth we would already have world peace if we perceive truth there would be kindness and compassion and acts of love and light like you carmen where people just want to make a positive difference in other people's lives because that's who we are so that's what we do but we are programmed on a subconscious level just based upon life through the design of our nervous system through the design of our brain we experience things and these experiences get what's called imprinted conditioned into our mind memories that are both good and bad loving and fearful 
from the moment we're conceived all the way until who we are today, we get downloaded with different ways of thinking about ourselves and digesting life and processing life and moving through life. We get conditioned by our primary caretakers. Right. Our parents, our families, and the world that we're a part of. And primarily, and this is really, to me, the biggest thing, our relationship with our own mothers. Yes. And uh, it's all about the divine feminine because everyone comes through a woman to be on this planet. Right. And so how we treat women, our relationship with our own mothers ultimately defines everything. So if we look at this world today, that is both viral in a pandemic way, but viral where we have thought viruses that have infected our mind, we begin to understand a whole deeper truth of what's happening here. And what I've come to know, understand, learn, um, and then as a result, know because I've applied it is that no matter where we are in our life, no matter what's going on, we have the ability to activate that innate potential to heal and to love ourselves and to forgive and to be compassionate and to grow. And like a caterpillar to a butterfly, we have the ability to evolve our lives. And that not only influences us, but as a result, because we're all one, we're all interconnected. That when just one person, like you, Carmen, chooses to shine so bright, you illuminate a path, a divine path, for all of us to heal in ways we'd otherwise not know because you're choosing to be courageous and face the fears of life with love. And I'm so inspired by you. I love you so much. I'm so grateful for your beautiful heart and this opportunity to connect with people that I know Everyone's going through something today. There's a lot happening and I want to talk to people. There's a, I want to share with people. I want to connect with people today so that we can really know that, you know what, there's certain, there's some simple things we can learn that create massive changes. We're, we're attempting to make a, a difference. We're attempting to change a behavior. We're attempting to heal our body, a relationship, a, a loss. We're attempting to get through it. And no matter what we do, it's not happening. It's like being open to change. And we that's what needed to happen. We just needed to change from one thing to another, allowed it to come through. And oftentimes we give up. Oftentimes we're like, oh, it's just not gonna happen. And, and I'm telling you, the subconscious mind goes via different laws than our conscious reality. It is a binary system. We judge the book by its cover, and meanwhile, it's not the cover. The nature of the subconscious mind is that it's below the surface, and it's the majority of who we are, like an iceberg. The iceberg is the majority, and it always overpowers our conscious mind if it's not in alignment with our conscious mind. Right. If the conscious and subconscious are not aligned in the present moment, whatever lives in the subconscious mind goes like this, whoop, and it overpowers. And so, you know, that could be a four-year-old little boy that, you know, had a situation go on where something didn't go my way and I was in an environment of, you know, whatever it might be, lost trauma, addiction, it could be anything, just something that I perceived to me emotionally traumatic. And that four-year-old little boy stays in my in my field, in my subconscious thought field. And it gets triggered and it takes over. And in our conscious mind, we think, well, I should be able to control this. I should be able to change that thought. I should be able to change this feeling. I should be able to get out of this relationship. But here I am, different face, different name, same energy again, Same and again. Energy, yes yeah and the nature of that is first and foremost the subconscious mind is not attached to your health it doesn't it's not attached to your relationships it's not attached to you know you being married or divorced or you know this or that your subconscious mind has a primary focus in the present moment it wants to protect you and it will 
better than anything. Even it protects so well that we don't even realize that it's protecting us when it happens. It just in a moment, whether it be like pulling our hand from a fire or getting that uncomfortable feeling of like being around certain people. So the fight and fight mechanism is is fully connected to the subconscious mind. It is one hundred percent subconscious. Okay. The freeze, fright, fight or flight. Yes, and the release of all the hormones in the the brain, those coracolamine, the neuro, the so-called neurotransmitters that are in conjunction with the flight and fight mechanism are also connected to the response of the subconscious mind. No. Completely. It runs really deep and wide. It really does. But here we are, and I notice like I hear a certain kind of noise, like could be the Fourth of July coming up, and I hear fireworks and like PTSD. All of a sudden, I'm feeling anxious. Or it right. could it could be even more subtle than that. It literally can be the smell of spaghetti, and all that the triggers, triggers something. Triggers, yeah. Those memories. Those memories. Imprints. What, what, for instance, good, I want to ask you, because this is so interesting. People are sometimes calling me and said, okay, I, I, I had a very, I had a nightmare. I had, I, I was sleeping and I woke up, you know what I mean, with that anxiety attack. And I remember uh, I had a bad dream and all of a sudden my blood pressure went to the roof. You know, my heart was getting out of my chest and I felt like uh, into that flight and fight mechanism. You know yeah. what I mean? And my neuro, neuropenephrine was to the roof. And it became physical, but was the result of dreaming, and it's the subconscious mind that took over the cognitive mind. So I was not even awake. So what happened to me then? So so it it makes sense that the subconscious mind took over everything and translated into the physical reality. No, always creating and anxiety. But the world today complains of severe anxiety. I mean. Anyone you ask in the world today will tell you, I'm anxious, I'm scared, I'm afraid, I want, I want to be protected. So yeah. what are people doing in the world today to feel, to have a sense of being protected? And how is the subconscious mind protecting us in, in the pandemic and in the world that we are living in? You know, and here's the interesting thing, because it protects us in the present moment. But when we live with anxiety, when we live in this constant state of reaction, emotional reaction, that's not protection. That's not protection. That's not protection. So there's two actual components of the subconscious mind. One is to protect in the present moment, such as physical protection, emotional protection, but there's also spiritual protection. Right. And the spiritual protection is when we don't have the conscious tools or strategies or support to actively, lovingly move through a circumstance. Right. In either does our environment, the subconscious mind protects us by walling off our emotions so that we don't have to process them. And we survive that moment. It's incredible because we're all here. We survived. We made it. You did it. We made it. Right. We made we made it. However, those emotions are energy in motion. They just don't sit still waiting for, okay, time to process. And in the meantime, I'll be calm, you know, and relaxed and, you know, no, this emotion that we don't have to process gets triggered constantly through our life. It right. shows up in our liver. It shows up in our blood sugar metabolism. It shows up in our immune system. It shows up with inflammation. It shows up with thoughts of negativity, limitation, and self-defeat, self-destruct, low self-esteem. It shows up not to victimize us. And right. it's protection. This is the awakening. And what's going on in our, in our own lives right now, and even further in our world right now, is we have an opportunity to process deep emotions that we've not only buried throughout our own life, but humanity has buried throughout history. And we've come to a convergence and it's a harmonic convergence where love is the choice. Gratitude is the choice. Fear is not a choice. Anxiety is not a choice. It's a reaction. It's a reaction. It's a reaction, but love and gratitude is a choice. But how do I do this? So there's a exactly. process. I want to show you something. So I was I was teaching some friends 
the other day and I still have my whiteboard here, so I, I think it'll come in handy. There's some basic things. There's some basic things that allow us to create change. We can learn and there's a process of getting present. There's a process of learning how to see the pain and anxiety and stress as a portal rather than a problem. We can learn to discern rather than judge. How to set intention out of love versus fear. How to use our imagination to create real medicine. How to take action on a subconscious level so that here's the iceberg. We can begin to change the subconscious reactions that have been driving our conscious mind and then therefore affecting the health of our body, therefore affecting the relationships in our life. It's it, it's simple, but it's just life isn't easy. There's a lot going on and, and only love and compassion. There's a lot going on. The pain is the pain. The fear is the fear. There's no denying it yet. There's a way to move through it. And, and that's what this course is going to be about. You know, yeah, that's what I think this course is so powerful. Coming it is. Exactly in the right time. It is. When humanity needs this course as mind medicine to transform the toxic emotion. Because what we have now is toxic emotion at its best. You know? Yeah. I, and, and how you get rid of those. Yeah. I call it a toxic mind syndrome. And. Right. And, and it really is. And yeah, it's, it's very interesting. You know, the shift network, when they realized what it was that I was teaching, they, they fast track this course to get it on because it's just, it's so important in our world today that we learn to the, the most important, all the gossip and everything that has to do with politics, you know, it, it, that, that is, is the priority. Unfortunately, that should not be the priority. This should be the priority to help the world heal because if the world is healed emotionally, we can handle it. You know, we're not going to react the way we react to the pandemic and everything in such a negative way. And we rebel. I live in Florida. I see that people are rebelling, rebelling because of their unprocessed emotion. Yeah. And they so angry. They all go to the beach and they don't care about the mask. It's just a rebelling phase of toxicity that exists in their heart because nobody's helping them understand what's happening and nobody's helping them heal those emotions. And you're the only one who can who can do it. That's why this course is magic. That's why I said I'll do anything to promote this course because the time is of the essence right now. It really is. And, you know, my one of my many passions, but what I just love to do is I I love to step back and keep asking the question why. And it doesn't matter what it is, whether it be a physical symptom, the body, a virus that's going on in the world, you know, a, a mutation, whatever it might be. I always love to look at things from an emotional mind point of view and right. what what I've come to appreciate and what I'm going to talk about in, 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 in this course is the nature of not just the virus in our body, but the virus in our mind that we have thought viruses right. that, that directly impact us. And it's really important for people to understand, like, why do these things form viruses form in our body or in our mind as a means to adapt to stressful experiences? They are part of an adaptation system that enables us to actually discover and become a greater version of ourself. And, and that's not how we're, we treat viruses, we, right? And, and understandable, here we are. I mean, you know, there's, there's something really going on here physically, but back up because if we can get to the fundamental core of an energy and a frequency, everything's energy and frequency. When we can create a specific vibration that raises these patterns, our immune system, our hormones, our digestion, everything pops, it starts to work together. I've, I've witnessed so many so-called miracles. It's just truly the design of our being, but it isn't if you don't know how to dance with this invisible partner called the subconscious. And, and it, it really is the youngest person who ever got trained in the lifeline was 16 years of age. The eldest oh, wow. the 80s. You don't need to be a doctor to understand this. You just need to go, wow, I'm interested. 
in in understanding my mind, my heart, my emotions, my thought fields, and how to manifest on a deeper level. And if that's fascinating for you and in in a value for you, then you'll appreciate the the process that um, that I'll teach. So the course is on July 1st. And again, for everybody interested, go to carmenhara.com, subscribe to my newsletter. You will receive the link and the link takes you uh, to the course. And it's very simple, very easy. And you will have this opportunity to learn so much. It's going to help you heal, heal that you, things that you wanted to feel forever in your lifetime. And you are never able to understand the mechanism of healing and you will be able to feel different. You will be a different person yeah. overall and most likely right now. So what do you suggest for humanity right now? It sounds like a big question. Uh, how can we collectively heal? I know you will say to love and gratitude, but what are really the steps that we need to take to get out of this uh, 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 situation with the pandemic? This is not about getting out mm -hmm. of this pandemic. It's about going through. Going through, yeah. And, and, and the key is our ability to process our emotions every step of the way. And that doesn't mean sitting on a couch for 20 years. Right. But there are specific steps that you, that anyone, that I teach my kids that are 15, uh, 13, and 12, I, my kids know how to process their emotions. Doesn't mean we don't get scared or anxious or upset or overwhelmed or angry. We do, we're human. Humans are emotional, just like children are. But, but how long do we carry our emotions? How long do we carry our emotions? Like this gunny sack, this huge bag of boulders that we carry around throughout our life. It's like it, it just becomes so stressful. Our ability to process our emotions is the most powerful thing any human being can do to move through this experience. When you are no longer triggered by what people say, how they say it, what they do, what they don't do, what they should do, all these things, when you are able to be in your bulletproof self because you're in love and gratitude, then everything from your health, your relationships, your opportunities of wealth, all kinds of things change as a result. And this is not cookie cutter. This is not one size fits all. So wherever you are, this is where we begin. And it's one step, one day at a time in learning simple things that we can use as consistent practices and exercises to create a deeper state of resilience so that we are more flexible and strong and confident in being ourselves. Be ourselves rather than the imprinted cookie cutter approach of what we've been, you know, you know, ultimately subconsciously programmed to experience. We all have the ability to emerge into that authentic expression and, and that might sound like what are you talking about for some people I mean, yes, like, exactly, what are you talking exactly, about exactly. like what are you and, and no one can be told you can't be told it that's why i find these conversations i love it but i also find it kind of funny because you can't be told you actually have to experience it and, and, and what I talk, what I teach, I teach the lifeline technique. And once you experience it, you know, but we live in a world that is a pop a pill culture. Take this pill for that, take that pill for this, yes. take this pill for that, yes. take this pill for that pill because it causes these side effects. And, and, you know, people, you know, by the age of 50 are on four, five, six, ten 10 medications because no one has taken responsibility for understanding the nature of our own mind medicine. And you end up by taking 20 pills when you're in your 60s, 70s. You depend on one pill that annihilates the other and one, oh my God, and, it becomes crazy, yeah. And nothing wrong with medicine because it saves lives. It saves right. lives and it's brilliant, but unless we bridge the gap 
and we start to understand what it means to live in a holistically minded, hearted body community world. Unless we understand the bigger picture, we will be, we will continue to rob Peter to pay Paul and the consequences will be continually tragic and suffering. And that in and of itself, the tragedy that we're going through right now is the gift in strange wrapping paper. It really is. There's something, you know, there's 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 something deeper in this. And um, I look forward to showing you uh, some basic things that you can begin to use. And as far as you want to go, as deep as you want to go, I'll show you. I've taught thousands of people around the world how to do this. And it just, it starts with just by going, well, I'm open to change. I'm, I'm open to learning. I, right. I, I'm, I, rather than I'm in my dogma and, you know, like I'm, I'm open. Like I've had enough of, I've had enough of this. I'm right. sick and tired of it. I, Carmen, I had this really incredible experience the other night. I was watching the movie Braveheart. You ever see it? Yeah. I know the movie, yeah. Amazing. I and I loved it. I loved it. And it, it reminded me of something that is just so profound and poignant for our world today. It's like when he when his beautiful love of his life was killed. It's like it was like, oh no way that just happened. No. And he just became possessed. And an internal rage went within him. And in a calm way, he went in on the horse, pulled out the sword, and that was the beginning of his courageous, brave heart. I saw something though that I had not seen before. And it is the word courage. Right. In the, in the word courage is the word rage. Right. And, right. right. And from I rage- I never thought, but you're so right. I never saw it. I never saw it until I'm watching and I'm like, and in my mind I'm seeing, he's so courageous. I'm like, oh, he's so filled with rage. But then the rage turned to a passion, a truth that we're all one. I'm not going to stand for this. This is, I'd rather, you know, die than be a, a slave to this king in England. Like, like, hey, there's in, there's truths that are coming to the surface and it might be difficult. It might be painful, but you know what? It's amazing to be alive at this time in the world. It's, it ama is. it's amazing to be alive at this time. And you, no one's alone, even though at times we feel lonely that we are all interconnected, we are all one, and we've got ways to move through this that are different than the um, program ways of take a pill to make this go away, numb myself with alcohol, drugs, work, sex, whatever it might be, that there are other ways to connect with your beautiful heart, your brave heart, your yes. courageous heart. Yes. And to discover the real power, to own your power. And um, I'm telling you, I just feel so blessed. I feel so grateful to know what I know. It doesn't mean I don't get scared. I do. It doesn't mean I don't get angry. I do. It doesn't mean I don't get sad. I do. But I embrace it. I face it. And as a result, I become just deeper and deeper into who I authentically am. And I've taught so many people the same. And, it, and, it, and it's a beautiful process. And now seven plus billion people here we are in a world right now that is like obviously filled with rage. Oh, you're a Republican, you're a Democrat, you're black, you're white, you're a woman, you're a man, you're this, you're that. Bullshit. bullshit. It's all bullshit. Right. In love and gratitude, we are all one. We're all one. And these are all beliefs that well, separate. Well, you had a show on Hay, uh, on Hay House was Infinite Love and Gratitude, you know what I mean? The heart of the matter. And my show was We Are One, and that was like 10 years ago. So we both, you know, we are 10 years later realizing that both our shows were, were talking pretty much of what's happening today. I mean, our titles, you know, are exactly a reflection of the world today. Totally. So, yes. Uh, and uh, I, I so much agree with, with everything you say. So, and there's a reason in everything. And mm. there is a reason in this pandemic. And if we embrace it, and if we see beyond, and if we learn how to acknowledge the feelings, the emotion, we can break through and be, come out stronger and more powerful and recreate this world and create a better world and acknowledge the, 
commonality that exists between us, the common ground, the things that we lost, the connection to all of us, to togetherness, to mother nature, uh, the, the beauty that exists within us that was, was pretty much lost in a way. So I cannot agree with you more. Is there, are there any negative feelings? Yes. I always teach people, by the way, to identify their dominant emotions, but because there are many emotions, good or bad, and a lot of negative feelings. And I, I always tell them, pay attention, which is your dominant emotion? Is it anger? Is it fear? Is it, what is it, you know? And try to work with that, but you are the master. So uh, let me know if in this course, you are teaching people how to take care of their emotions. So. Tell us about uh, this is the course. What's coming on Wednesday is going to be an hour of teaching people real simple process to harmonize anything. To harmonize anything. That no matter what it is, no matter what you're going through, I'm going to teach one thing that shifts, that gets you present and in your power. And it, it's, it's the ultimate tool. I'm going to be teaching that. I'm going to be talking about the unique steps of bridging the gap between the conscious and subconscious mind so that they are aligned in the present moment and that we can begin our journey. Those, and that in of itself, it's like, you know, going from being driven by fear to a place where love's power is, uh, has a potential to exist is, is so extraordinary. We're gonna go into that. But this will be an opportunity for those people that do resonate with it. If they want to go deeper, I'm going to be then teaching a seven week course. And the seven week course will, I've created an amalgamation of my life's work that helps people to tap into the pharmacy of their own subconscious mind how I'm going to teach people how to use muscle reflex. Can you also do a book on this? Oh, yeah, well, yeah, I, I, I did three books. Like this course should also be a book, no? Yeah, Yo, I or see a, what you're saying. Yeah, like a PBS uh, uh, special. Yeah, absolutely. You should absolutely. do a PBS special. Yeah, I love it. I love it. It would be amazing. It'd be because amazing. I feel like you have all the ingredients. The time is perfect to come up with something and PBS will give all the exposure. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, yeah. I think without, I without a doubt. I mean, ultimately, you know, this is very important information. It like, is like doing a book and then doing some, some CDs, like taking the course and translating into a full material that people can actually buy, uh, through the presentation on PBS. Yeah. I see you there. I mean, in my mind, I see you on PBS on a large audience. You know what I mean? And I, I feel like this is so powerful and it, it is, is exactly what we need in this very moment. It, it, it don't is. don't know how to bridge consciousness with subconscious mind. People don't really understand the difference. No, it, it, it's, it's sad, but it's true. It we is. We not taught this kind of things. We don't know no. how to dissociate one right. from the other. Right, exactly. And so, you know, and as a result, we stay the same and we stay in a certain level of a comfort zone, uncomfortable and um, and we repeat patterns, not only through our own life, but these are patterns of generations that came before us. These are patterns of lifetimes and um, that energy stays in motion until it's met by another force. And that force is the courageous heart. And um, and, yeah. and there there is there is a I'm very excited the way that I that I put it together um, that enables people to understand the simplistic components of bridging the gap and right. then the process of how to communicate with your subconscious mind through muscle reflex testing, how to process your emotions through something I call the see, feel, hear process, you know, how to integrate them on a deep, deep level to change the neuroplasticity of your mind body. And then using aspects of like things like from NLP, the uh, neuro linguistic programming, the nature of words for healing versus words that are poisonous, how to use quantum physics to observe our body and change it through observation, through intention, how to use our focus to create a deeper. So level. powerful. 
all powerful. There's so there's a there's a whole unique process that I'm going through that we'll be going through together that will truly empower people for a lifetime. So the layout of the course has what are the the, the, the major points of the course is uh, to stop perceiving the world based on past trauma. No, no, that's one one of the, the number one uh, uh, layout of the course. No. Yeah, yeah, and just so that we can understand. So we can understand it's like this is how I've been viewing it from this subconscious reactive position okay. and right. perspective. And there are certain things that I can immediately ask that immediately shift my perspective. As Wayne Dyer said, once I change the way I view things, the things that I view begin to change. So right. when, we, when we can shift these core limiting beliefs through simple questions and through simple exercises, a whole new realm of possibilities open up. Yeah, you can never create a new reality with the same kind of thinking. So changing the thinking, but you cannot change the thinking if you don't realize where is the imprint of the thinking? Where is that coming from? Yeah. And that imprint of behavior, that pattern of behavior, where is that coming from? And you know, the mind operates on repetition. We keep on repeating the same thing and we keep on allowing the same behavior over and over without realizing that that imprint was created probably a long time ago by some kind of a trauma or something that we've experienced that has never been healed. So what your course, uh, what you actually do it during the course, you help people go, go dig deeper into where the problem was originally created and help them annihilate and delete that information and heal that in the subconscious mind, no? Yeah, yeah. And it's very interesting, Carmen, because if we don't see it, if we don't recognize that it's actually going on, like some people just, I'm right. just an angry person. I'm just not good at relationships. I'm just, right. I'm not able to make money. I'm just, you know, unhealthy, I'm sick. Right. You know, when we define ourselves in this way and then we're in this, then there there needs to be something where we go, wait a second, like, like Mel Gibson and Braveheart, there needs to be a defining moment where we're like, wait a second, I can't, I'm, I, I can't stand this anymore. I'm not going to live my life anymore. I need another way. Once we actually are aware, like the energy in motion is something that is stuck and struggling and suffering. Like you said, like you have people focus on their primary emotions. It's so right. important just to be honest. I am angry. I am anxious. I'm overwhelmed. Bring it to the surface. Bring it to Bring the it surface. Bring it from that, those layers of the subconscious mind into your cognitive reality and acknowledge it. And acknowledge it. And that is the beginning step. It's not enough because awareness alone will not make the change. True. Absolutely. Right? You know, it's like I'm aware that my brain produces opiates that, you know, kill pain. Like All right. Yeah. Right. So I got a migraine opiates. Go do your job. And I'm, aware why didn't... I'm, a, I'm an alcoholic and I yeah. think if I don't stop drinking, I will continue to be an alcoholic. No? Right. <laughs> right. But I can't stop because I'm in that subconscious pattern. Yes. Because right? that's the nature of it. So understanding that there are steps and and I love it. It's like. You've got to acknowledge what are the primary emotions? What am I feeling? What is the way my body's speaking to me with disease and, mm. and dysfunction, right? And then from there, we can begin a journey of making a connection with the subconscious mind and now guide, drive, lead the subconscious mind rather than being driven by it. And this is about creating a loving, compassionate, beautiful, intimate relationship, which is really weird with a part of ourself that has created the most significant sufferings in our life. But I'm, but I'm telling you, this is what we do and this is what you can do. You can create change on the deepest levels, no matter what you're going through, no matter what we all have the ability to create our own mind medicine. It's absolutely profound how powerful the mind is but there's one thing more powerful and that is our heart and the challenge right now is the heart's broken the heart's been bruised 
the heart's been beaten up, the heart's been beaten down. Um, and the heart is just like gasping for breath in our world today. And, you know, th the key is how do we, how do we create this force field of love and light and divinity for our heart to be what it's designed to be. And that is the ultimate manifestor because the one thing that can hack the mind is the heart. The one thing that can change the mind is the heart. But right now, guess what? Our hearts have been hijacked by our minds and our hearts are beating with memories and programs that are not even our own. We're feeling and functioning and forming imbalanced, diseased bodies based upon a heart that has been hijacked by our subconscious mind that affects our brain, that affects our cells, that affects our relationships and what we attract in our life. And, you know, it, this really is a journey of the heart and it's about creating a relationship with this thing that's so powerful. It is a quantum computer called our subconscious mind and it bridge, it bridges our body with the universe. It, it bridges our, our life and our relationships with the universe, the subconscious mind. But the navigating tool, right here, right here in each of our own chests. So to, to everyone's heart, I love you. To everyone's heart, you're beautiful. You're amazing. You're so capable and, and one step at a time. And I'm just so grateful that Carmen, that you show up in the way that you do and that all the people who love and adore you like me are here and a part of this beautiful dialogue. And I, I hope that they join uh, me on Wednesday and that they sign up through your newsletter because it's going to be very fruitful. Feel free to go to CarmenHara.com, subscribe to my newsletters. You will receive the link. Click on the link that takes you to Dr. Darren Wiseman uh, course and be present on the course. And I promise you, you guys get also a gift, this uh, uh, prosperity bracelet. So oh, beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, Basically, that has all the signs of prosperity. So I, I want to uh, entice you guys because I know that um, we need some balance, some prosperity. And, you know, I wear it all the, <laughs> all the time. It, it just, um, it brings you that energy. You know, uh, sim I believe in symbols like we all do. I am uh, grateful for you listening. I'm grateful for you being part of this uh, presentation, Dr. Darren. And... For all of you and i told you this course on july 1st is a free course i cannot thank you enough for knowing you for giving me the opportunity to speak to you for being such a bright light and such a healer such a doctor in this world the real doctor in this world uh, who help us heal the most important part of us you know the subconscious mind if we heal the subconscious mind the rest is very easy believe me yeah. We, can, we can be disease free if we know how to heal our feelings, our emotions, our trauma uh, and everything else that is stored there in the deep layers uh, of our mind. We, we can live a very long and healthy life. And I think that's where the humanity is going to a very long life in the years ahead. And to stability of balance between black and white, women and men, you know, different parties. And we don't need this nonsense anymore. And I think probably we needed this pandemic to realize that we are all, we are, we're on the wrong track. And we have to come together, like you said, it's about unity. It's about oneness. You know, is it about being together in the same situation? to acknowledge the common ground that exists among us. So uh, I think this is what matters most. I'm going to give you the last word at the end of this presentation. And I'm going to thank you one more time. And I want to tell you one more time how grateful I am and how much I love you. Uh, and I'm grateful I, and, I, and I love you. And I'm, I'm, I'm really humbled. And it's, you know, a, a very powerful thing because I really, I, I do not see myself as anyone's guru. I find the guru within each of us. I True. developed the lifeline technique because I struggled. I suffered uh, throughout my childhood and throughout my life in many different physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual ways. And my way um, through this was through it. It was either I'm going to get off the planet or I'm going to discover a way other than what I knew. And as a result of this, I feel grateful that uh, I have this passion and purpose to empower as many people as I possibly can with ways 
to move through your own pain, fear, and stress and discover the portal, the doorway to the next greatest version of yourself, your health, your relationships, and being a part of a world that is truly a loving world. That is the evolution that we are stepping into right now during these very trying times. So Dr. Carmen, thank you so much. And thank you everyone for being a part of this beautiful dialogue. I love you, Dr. Carmen, and I'm so grateful. I love for you, your beautiful Dr. you go to carmenhara.com, subscribe to the newsletter, click, uh, you receive the link, click on the link, and the link will mention the time of the course on July 1st. Oh, it's 5.30 um, Pacific. What time is it? 5.30 Pacific, 8.30 Eastern. 8.30 Eastern time. So, uh, in the evening, 8.30 Eastern in the evening, 5.30 Pacific on Wednesday, July 1st. On, on, uh, on California time. So when five, you will get all this information again. Uh, yeah. 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern time, 5 Pacific. Yeah. That's perfect. I love you, Dr. Darren, and everybody, everybody watching us. We're grateful. We love you. We thank you. And thank you for your time, Dr. Darren. My uh, pleasure and honor. Have a beautiful, I beautiful rest of your soon. day. I hope we're going to do another live anytime soon. And Let's... by the way, I have a new book uh, coming. Will you endorse it for me? Yes, I will. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I love you, Dr. Amazing. Darren. I want to see you on the show and I, I will be at your course. I'm your biggest fan. Your biggest Thanks. fan. I love you. Love you. Thank you, my love. Love everybody. Thank you for listening. God bless you and be safe and wear the mask and stay indoors still to prevent this from spreading. God bless you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. We love you. Love and gratitude. Love and, gratitude. and love and gratitude. Thank you, Carmen. We love you. Thank you. <laughs>